So I'm going to start off by asking you guys two questions. My first question is, hands up who thinks food security is only a problem for the developing world? Very good. And who thinks food security is everybody's business? Yay. Um, so there are actually three faces to food security, physical, social, and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food. Food that meets both our basic dietary preferences and needs, and which means that we all have an active and healthy lifestyle. So my name is Sylvie Healy Thao, I'm 17, and a few years ago I was involved in a project where we used a naturally occurring bacteria to speed up the germination rate of crops, like barley, wheat, and oat, by up to 50%, and increase their dry mass yield by up to 74%. But did we combat global hunger? Not exactly. But what this led me into was a whirlwind of science competitions, exhibitions, and fairs where I met some amazing government, governmental people, presidents, celebrities, and most importantly, some amazing and inspiring young people. People who are interested in food security, people who wanted to question food security, and most importantly, people who wanted food securities and these problems solved. But what I usually found out was that food security was seen through a victim or an aid lens. And this has got to change if we are to make any progress in the future. So again, there are three kind of phases of food security. There's availability, access, and use. Availability. This is having enough food available on a consistent basis. But this doesn't just involve people in the developing world. It involves small-scale agricultural farmers, but also big agricultural businesses. It also involves scientists. This is how I got involved. The second is access, having enough food um, for a nutritious diet. This has, to be got, has got to be equal between the developing and the developed world. And the third one is use, the appropriate use based on, based on knowledge of basic nutrition and care. This is sanitation and water usage, but it also is education, educating people from as young as toddlers upwards. In 2011 to 2013, 842 million people were suffering from chronic hunger. This is well on its way to being one billion people. Think about it. What's even worse is that where is the food security for these 842 million people? These people go to bed in fear of chronic hunger and starvation every single night. What's even worse is that we produce enough food to feed the world twice over. And yet we waste 60% of that food globally. This is why it is time for change. It's time to get you involved. It's time for me to be involved. We need to be part of the conversation on solving the problems of food security. I believe that if we bring all our individual talents and tools together, we can end world hunger. In Ireland alone, over half the population are already overweight or obese. That's 62 percent of us, and yet we are all taught about the Great Famine, one of Ireland's most historic moments where we relied on one singular food crop. This food crop failed, and there was an inadequate response to this global crisis. What would our ancestors think if they knew today that our biggest problem is overeating? Globally, if you look around you, 30% of people are overweight and 13.5% are starving. These are shocking and shaming figures by any standards. I don't think any one of you in this room would believe and not agree with me that people shouldn't go to bed hungry or in fear of starvation for the next day. 
What's even worse is that we need 60% more food by 2050 if we are to feed the world. This is why we should educate everyone about food security, but most importantly, we must educate our young people about food security. If we make young people more aware about food security, they are the people that are going to bridge the gaps between the rich and the poor countries. Education is fundamental. If we take our young children and we teach them about the value and the importance of food and the reality of food production, I believe we are well on our way to making the world more food secure. Why am I so passionate about this? Well, if you could all imagine 100,000 small-scale farmers in India. Imagine if they could increase their crop yields. Imagine the benefits that can come from that for their communities, their families, and for themselves. This is the power of numbers. In the developing countries, they all have one thing in common, and that's the percentage of them employed in agricultural farming. This is small-scale farming compared to the developed world. Imagine how many small-scale farms are in the developing world compared to the developed. But on a slightly happier note, we can bridge the gap between the small-scale agricultural farmer in the developing world with the agricultural scientist in a laboratory. This is through technology, like satellite technology, internet, and even the use of mobile phones. There's also been vast improvements in agricultural technology. Technology that farmers can use to lessen their water usage soil maps in which they can find out where, when, and what crops to grow in their soil, and also testing kits to find out the biodiversity and the biochemistry of their soil. But importantly, there are management techniques being brought in to bring this all together in a meaningful way. I believe this will empower farmers and their communities and will leave lasting benefits. In the media lately, Partnerships between public and private have got a lot of bad press. But again, I believe cooperation between businesses and governments is fundamental in innovation in food security. Governments have invested heavily in producing new variety of crops and making them more drought and disease resilient and producing more yield for farmers in the developed and the developing countries. This is how I became interested in food security. At the moment, we are in the middle of the biggest phase of urbanization in history. Thousands of people are moving from rural areas into cities and towns, and this is causing urban sprawl and the destroying of many small-scale farms. Last week, I was at the National Geographic's Explorer Symposium in Washington. I was, I was listening to a man called Caleb Hunter from MIT City Farms, and he was telling me all about these ways you can urban farm, vertical farm, and have farms on the top of high-rise buildings in cities. There are also projects being done in Rio de Janeiro where they make farming more sustainable to the population, especially in urban areas. In Ireland at the moment, Healthy Food for All is working on community initiatives, school initiatives, and working with policymakers to make farming available to us and people working in the cities. Grow It Yourself, Sow and Grow Schools campaign is being implemented in primary schools all over Ireland. In 2014, 20,000 children were involved in growing food in schools, and their aim for 2015 is to have 100,000 young people farming in their schools, just in Ireland. That's food security. Similar programs are being implemented in countries all over the world, such as the Food and Trees program in Africa, which began in November 2014 and is now in 57 schools in Limpopo. That's food security. 
That's not giving a man a fish. That's teaching him how to fish. That's making him food secure. I'm going to leave you with one final thought. Food security is far from being a modern issue. Years ago, the Incas produced more food than they needed, and they needed to find ways of storing this food. Their government system, tax system, labor systems, all made up one gigantic food distribution unit. I believe that if we look at the history, we can really solve problems into the future. Let's get educated, let's get organized, and let's make a real impact. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, Earth provides enough to satisfy every man's needs, but not every man's greed. Thank you very much.